Give us a sense. I think you're just recently back from Shanghai. What are the effects right now in China? Uh, good morning, David. I think, uh, first of all, there is a significant uh, dent to consumer confidence in China. Uh, it's extremely important for the Chinese government's credibility and legitimacy that they maintain safety and uh, security. Hence the uh, very substantial and, uh, to use the words of your previous guest, draconian measures to try and get the problem under control. So there'll be a hit to consumer confidence and therefore to consumption. Uh, obviously, in the short term, uh, the home confinement of many consumers is resulting in uh, um, a reduction in sales at the retail stores, hotels, tourism, travel. You mentioned uh, the Royal Caribbean cruise line cancellations. Uh, all of these are important economic uh, effects at a time that the economy was slowing down. But I think one thing that has not been mentioned is the uh, disruption to uh, supply chain. Um, Wuhan is a very important industrial center. It's essentially the Chicago of northern China. A uh, very big steel producing area, Dongfeng Motor Company is headquartered there, uh, big machinery manufacturing center, uh, supplying many components to many uh, companies around China. Even if uh, uh, the government successfully controls the virus by locking down Hubei province, 60 million people, nevertheless, there are supply chains out of Wuhan that uh, will be uh, disrupted. And as we have heard earlier, the Chinese government has postponed uh, the end of the New Year festival. Mm -hmm. So effectively, there will be lost production days at Chinese factories as a result of uh, company workers not being able to get back on the job uh, as they expected. Yeah, Dean Quach, you, you raise a very interesting and important point. And, and I don't know the answer to this. When we say we lock down, Wuhan and the, and the province. Does that mean all the manufacturing is shut down? Are workers going to the factories? Are they making things? Are they shipping them out? Well, during this uh, particular week, uh, and it's actually a little bit fortuitous for the Chinese government, pretty much everyone in China is not uh, scheduled to be on the job this week. Uh, but the government has indicated that they are extending the holiday. Uh, I think first uh, the extension was stated as being to February 3rd, which would be a, an additional three days. Uh, and now there's some indications that in some parts of the country it may be extended to February the 10th. Uh, so it's very unlikely, uh, given that uh, uh, transportation restrictions are in place that would prevent uh, workers getting to work, uh, that uh, the uh, factories will be opening on schedule right after the end of the official Chinese New Year holiday. Uh, so, Dean, you make a, a really powerful point about manufacturing, about the supply chains. What about the financial communities? What about Shanghai, for that matter, Hong Kong as well? We're hearing some reports, for example, banks are saying, please stay home, don't come to work. Uh, now, the markets, I guess, would not be functioning anyway because of the Lunar New Year. Is that correct? Uh, correct, yeah. But uh, I think that the important point you're making is that uh, people all over China are understandably nervous. Um, Obviously, they don't have uh, clarity around the science at this point, as your previous guest indicated. So uh, it's not unreasonable for people to be very cautious. Uh, they're staying at home. Perhaps they can do some things via teleconference and telecommuting. Uh, E-commerce will be up uh, as retail sales go down. Um, but overall, I would say that uh, in Shanghai and Beijing, uh, those centers at the moment are not feeling the same threat uh, that uh, obviously people in Hubei province are, are feeling. Uh, however, it is clear that there are some shortages that uh, are evident uh, at retail in terms of groceries, but also in terms of medical supplies. The government of China has understandably taken a very strong line in terms of anyone trying to profit from excessive price gouging on health supplies, drugs, uh, masks, etc. We're talking with John Quelch. He's dean of the University of Miami Business School. Uh, dean, a lot of people compare this or like to compare it with SARS. Uh, you said that the credibility of the government, the regime to some extent, is on the line here. Uh, is it appearing so far that they learned a lot from SARS and they're doing a much better job? Uh, absolutely. There's no question that uh, 
The government learned a lot from SARS. They do not want to be embarrassed again. Uh, that was a, a national embarrassment. I think one key indicator of the commitment of the Chinese is that they sequenced the gene of the virus within seven days of uh, understanding that there was a, a virus to be sequenced and posted that information uh, to the global health community on the National Institute of Health website, for example. So the level of transparency is significantly greater than it was uh, in the case of SARS. What may not be different is that local government officials in Wuhan probably were a little bit slow off the mark in notifying the central government as to what was uh, going on. And this is a, a classic problem you have in uh, a top-down authoritative regime where people at the local level are simply skittish about, uh, if you like, uh, calling fire in a crowded theater and then being discovered that there's no fire. Uh, that, that's something a bureaucrat does not want to do in China. So they were a little bit slow off the mark, but once the central government got a grip on this, they went all out, as you can see, in the last week. And, and Dean, that takes me exactly to the larger question here for me. We've heard a lot about the different structure of the economy of the government in China versus the United States, particularly through this trade dispute that's been going on, certainly under President Trump. As you look at that more authoritative, I think you said, sort of a command control structure, they have a lot more control over their economy and their government centralized in China. Is that an advantage when you have an epidemic like this or could it be a disadvantage? Well, I think, I think it's clearly an advantage in terms of, you know, the notion of locking down 60 million people, uh, essentially uh, four and a half percent of the population of the country um, in Hubei province. You know, that's something that would be very difficult for any Western uh, democracy to easily entertain. Um, I do think, uh, however, that as far as the trade situation is concerned, uh, first of all, uh, the Chinese central government is totally preoccupied at the moment mm. with uh, fixing this issue. And so any conversation regarding, you know, phase two trade deals and so on with the United States, that's not even, uh, not even remotely on the agenda at the moment. Right. Uh, if the Chinese economy does take a hit, uh, that is sustained, um, then, of course, there is a further weakening effect to the economy and it puts China in a position of perhaps needing a little bit more urgently a further removal of the uh, tariffs, the 15 percent tariffs right. that still apply to around about 370 billion right. of Chinese exports to uh, but, the U.S. But, but, Dean, you make such an important point. It's not just phase two. Phase one has to be implemented now. And according to the Trump administration, they're going to be watching carefully to see whether China can do it. Given this problem, if it continues, as our last expert just said, until May, for example, it's going to be hard for them to make sure they're buying enough soybeans, for example, just to take one at random. Right. Um, that's certainly the case. I mean, this is the focus, the sole focus of everybody in the uh, central administration at this point. I would point out that uh, in the case of SARS, uh, back in 2002 to four, the first reported uh, case was in November of 2002, and the last reported case was in May of 2004. Of course, the, there was clear evidence that the problem had peaked long before that 18-month period concluded. But nevertheless, I think uh, the, no, the notion that there will be a six-month uh, period of partial disruption to the mm -hmm. Chinese economy, it's worth, uh, worth noting that. Mm. At the same time, if they have been successful in confining this to uh, what amounts to uh, five percent of the uh, GDP of China in Hubei province, you know, that's a that's a um, uh, a level of uh, aggravation that can be right. absorbed. Let me just point out one thing, David, and that is that 2020 is the fifth year of the China five year plan. Yeah. And President Xi and his colleagues will no doubt want to do all they can to hit their numbers yeah. uh, in 2020, despite right. this uh, coronavirus. And what that means is fiscal stimulus, monetary easing, right. uh, perhaps yeah. a renegotiation of is the it, tariffs. 